State Department is preparing for a multi-billion dollar sale of smart bomb technology to Saudi Arabia. The Saudi government will reportedly purchase $7 billion worth of precision-guided missiles from Raytheon and Boeing. The United Arab Emirates will also purchase some of the 60,000 munitions under the deal. The precision-guided missiles have been used repeatedly in the Saudi-led coalition's operations in Yemen. A recent strike killed more than 20 people at a wedding, including the bride and several children. For more on this tonight, we go to Robert Naiman, policy director at Just Foreign Policy. Robert, nice to have you with us tonight. First of all, I understand that you're going to be embarking on quite a, a mission to, to Gaza, and I want to touch on that in just a few moments. But first, let's deal with this sale. What, what is this? This is almost like a human rights violation because we know exactly what the Saudis are going to be using these weapons for. How do you see this coming down? Well, indeed, the United States is a co-belligerent with Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates in their war in Yemen, which has created the worst humanitarian crisis in the world uh, with millions of human beings uh, on the edge of starvation with uh, more than a million cases now of cholera, the worst cholera outbreak in recorded history, directly as a result of the U.S.-backed uh, Saudi war and blockade. So the, the arms are one piece. The U.S. is refueling the Saudi and UAE planes in the middle of their bombing runs. New York Times uh, recently revealed more detail on the actual targeting that U.S. Special Forces are uh, supplying to the Saudis. And the United States, together with Britain and France, are providing diplomatic cover at the United Nations, preventing any uh, Security Council action for a ceasefire. Yeah. Is this as much a business deal as it is politics? And this is not a slam dunk in the Senate, either. Explain that to us. Well, it is a business deal. On the other hand, you know, there's uh, the United States isn't selling arms to Iran, uh, and uh, it's not, you know, selling arms to uh, adversary countries. So, uh, at least not as far as we know. So, it's also part of the Trump administration's doubling down on the U.S. alliance with Saudi Arabia, even in the face of this uh, catastrophic uh, war. So um, it's not just about uh, making money uh, for these companies, although uh, it is that. And as you said, um, this is controversial in Washington. Under United States law, the Arms Export Control Act, this is not uh, the Trump administration's unilateral decision. Congress can object. They have 30 days from the official notification. Any senator can introduce a resolution of disapproval. That's what happened a year ago in a very similar uh, yeah. deal, the PGM. 47 senators voted against it. And in March, uh, 44, just, you know, just a couple months ago, 44 senators voted for the Sanders Lee Murphy resolution to end all uh, U.S. participation in the war, part on the grounds that Congress yeah. has never authorized it, so it's unconstitutional. And some of the and people who voted the other way in June uh, voted against the war in March. So if everybody who's opposed this in one of those two votes were to vote against it, that would be 51 senators voting uh, to block this deal. And your mission on a flotilla, tell us about it to Gaza. Uh, uh, calling attention to the uh, ongoing uh, Gaza blockade and the humanitarian crisis. Uh, this flotilla is sailing to Gaza, going through Europe first, and uh, that's where I'm headed now to Germany uh, to uh, support and then uh, participate uh, in the flotilla, calling attention to the, uh, to the catastrophe in Gaza, much like the catastrophe in Yemen, only U.S. supporting Israel in this case rather than U.S. supporting Saudi Arabia. This can be a very dangerous trip. Robert Naiman, good luck to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. All the best. Appreciate it.